Hey guys, and welcome to our next video. Um, this next video, um, I'm first going to start out with a picture here. Um, so we're not learning bio, but this uh, is something you guys might be familiar with from elementary school. All right, and this is the metamorphosis of a butterfly. All right, so that word met metamorphosis means change. All right, and you can see egg, small caterpillar, large caterpillar the pupa stage, and then finally the adult stage. So in other words, it's going through a life cycle. Okay, The rocks we're going to be looking at, metamorphic, are going to be undergoing changes as well. Okay, And the changes that happen, obviously the characteristics of the rock are, are going to be changed by whatever they're experiencing. So let's take a look at these. And one thing that stands out right away with these um, are distorted minerals okay so definitely something you'll see in a lot of metamorphic rocks distortions of some sort because um, the way they're formed you'll find out um, so a sedimentary or an igneous or another metamorphic rock that's been changed in the following ways texture the way the mineral grains are aligned composition the type of mineral grains by heat and pressure without melting so in other words, these are kind of like uh, rocks that are near magma uh, or deep underground uh, being crushed or he heated up, but not as much as an igneous rock. Okay, So if they were fully melted, you would have another igneous rock. Right? But this isn't the case. So as a result of all this heat and pressure, you end up with distortion of the minerals and rocks uh, present. So where do these happen? Okay, so one place that definitely happens uh, is under where mountains are forming. Okay, so that's what we call regional metamorphism, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, also, you can think of it deep within the second layer of the Earth called the mantle. Um, and then another place that can happen is called plate boundaries. Okay, so pl remember the tectonic plates moving around. You've probably heard that before. Um, so we'll be talking about that in a future chapter, but where there's plate movements is pressure, and obviously that's where you're going to find metamorphic rocks. All right, so here they here are some of them. Okay, so you can see different characteristics. So let's take a look and see how we get to these type of rocks like slate, schist, nice, jadeite, garnet, um, marble, sapphire, and equal jite. Alright, but anyway, uh, granite changes into gneiss here. Um, so granite, you remember as an igneous rock, you can see crystals in it. The crystals actually get aligned into what we call bands. So this is called banding when this happens. You can see dark and light stripe in the, uh, ro uh, in the rock. Okay, heat and pressure cause the minerals to change or recrystallize. So this recrystallization causes new mineral growth without melting. All right, the resulting thing is um, you end up with these metamorphic rocks. Now, here's a common thing. So if you have magma underground here, uh, where you're going to find the metamorphic rocks is not in the magma itself or right near it. It's going to be the stuff right above it. So this area here, right on the edge, depending on what type of rock it is, will determine uh, the final metamorphic rock it turns into. All right, so conglomerate as an example. Um, remember those are rounded pebbles. Okay, they can actually be stretched and become uh, a conglomerate's cousin called metaconglomerate. Okay, so it will be like elongated pebbles, um, distorted. Shale, which you remember, sedimentary rock, uh, smooth particles, can actually be pushed into little layers like almost like a pancake and you get slate okay, and some people have slate in their yard um, some uh, it's very popular for wall stones around uh, landscaping and also sometimes for uh, patios uh, slate also can be further crystallized and become schist all right so schist is a, uh, a layered um, foliated metamorphic rock what we call it and you'll see little crystals that actually stacked on top of each other. And we already learned granite 
can be recrystallized or realigned into nice, which is dark and light banding uh, that you see present. Okay, so characteristics, I already said the word foliation. So foliation is a layering. Uh, so the crystals of the minerals are aligned into layers and they can actually be aligned into bands sometimes. So if it's light and dark bands, it's called banding. Um, if it's just straight up layers with no dark and light stripes, it's called foliation. So try not to interlock those words because they're a little different. Uh, but banding is a type of foliation. Okay, it's just a particular type. Foliation is caused by extreme pressure and temperature, squeezing the rock layers into perpendicular layers. So here's an example of that. So you're pushing down, again, making layers, and the crystals will actually align into those layers. Okay, distorted structures. If the pressure is uneven on one side, you end up with distortion. Um, so curving and folding of the rock layers. Okay, so it's like kind of like taking like a piece of paper like this. And if you push it from both sides, you'll end up with a fold um, or distorted structure uh, within the rock material. And that happens often. Okay, and you see that in this picture right here, we were just talking about. Okay, so regional metamorphism occurs over a large area under usually where mountains form. Um, there are large mountains of metamorphic rock. Good example of that, Adirondack region. So upstate New York, which has intensely metamorphosed rock. Uh, pressure, heat, and deep uh, burial result in mountain building creation. And, and the pressure is the main thing that causes the uh, distortion that you see in the metamorphic rocks. On the other hand, contact metamorphism. It's when the rock becomes in contact with magma and is partially burned or partially melted. And as a result, you get new crystal growth, you get lined into crystals. And there is a um, way it actually changes. Um, so limestone, as an example, sedimentary rock, turns into marble. Okay, so we call limestone marble's parent rock, all right? Because parent rock is what it was before it changed. So we usually go parent daughter in science, that's the way we do it. So limestone is the parent rock and marble is the daughter rock. Okay, quartz sandstone turns into quartzite. Shale turns into hornsfels, all right? And here's the type of question they might give you. Um, so here's actually a magma dome, as we call it. And here's sedimentary rock layers which are touching it. Limestone will turn into marble right where you see that pink area. Okay, quartz where this orange turns into quartzite. Okay, uh, the gray area turns into the Hornsfels. Okay, um, so the way that works on the reference table, they'll tell you the actual from what rock it uh, comes from. Okay, so you can take a look at those, and they might have this as rock layer X, and then you would have to find that. Uh, marble comes from metamorphism of limestone. Okay, so that's just an example of how you could do that type of question. All right, so on the reference table, um, they're identified based on the texture, whether non foliated or foliated, their mineral compositions, once again, type of metamorphism that formed them. Okay, so heat or uh, pressure basically as the main types. All right, so here you go. Here's the breakdown of it. So again, foliated or up on top, non-foliated on the bottom. So this kind of looks like the cemetery rock chart partially, um, not as complex as the igneous one. All right, but foliated uh, is then broken down into grain size, uh, fine, fine to medium, medium to coarse. And banding is listed right here too. Um, that's only for the rock nice. Mineral alignment means that just there's layers. Okay, so again, we just call it foliated. All right, so if you have to put down a characteristic, make sure you put foliated or mineral align alignment. That's also another way to say it. Um, composition 
they just put a bar if they have that uh, mineral present. So nice is made of all these minerals. Schist is uh, pretty much all of them also, but sometimes uh, pyroxene is absent. Phyllite is made of garnet, amphibole, fel uh, feldspar, quartz, and mica, and slate is just mica. Okay. And these are all regional metamorphism, heat and pressure increase with depth. So obviously as you go down the row here, um, they're saying uh, basically, I guess, they're formed under higher uh, heat and pressure conditions. Okay, and then the ones on the bottom here, non-foliated. So once again, they arrange them in grain size. Composition is very particular with these, except for horn spells, which could be variable. So that means it could be a mixture of anything. Quartz, calcite, and or dolomite. Um, so again, that makes sense because limestone is its parent rock or dolostone. Um, Various minerals and particles in a matrix, so metaconglomerate, that makes sense because it's made of pebbles that are distorted or stretched. Um, horn cells is from contact metamorphism only. Um, these are all regional or contact, so either one. And then comments, again, just gives you other information like the parent rock in which they're formed from and also some other information about those uh, metamorphic rocks you could use in questions. Okay, and the rock names are listed here, and then the map symbols, once again, in case they have them in the, um, the rock layers when we talk about those in a future chapter. All right, so that's it for metamorphic rocks, and we'll see you next time.